sometimes I, I feel that my fellow business owners, my fellow appraisers tend to treat VAs a little less than. They tend to treat their VAs as, as not persons just because they're on the other side of the world. They might live in a third world country. They might have a different situation than you and I have. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide, your host. Dustin Harris. One of the more popular topics that I have uh, on a regular basis, uh, questions that come in from other appraisers across the nation, whether it be my all-star team, the Appraiser Academy, or the Dream Team, or just an appraiser out there that has a question for me. You know, a very hot topic out there is virtual assistants or VAs. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, one of my big, big, big pet peeves is when individuals uh, try to go this route uh, to save some money. And um, I'll tell you, it's going to bite you in the rear end if you don't treat your VAs like people, because guess what? <sighs> they are. I want to pause here and remind you that we are sponsored by Data Master. Speaking of people, Data Master has great people, including the new CEO, Kevin. Have an opportunity to talk to him recently. And uh, I love the direction that Data Master is taking. You will too. Go to datamasterusa.com for more information. Again, it's Data Master USA. Dot com. We're sponsored by Alamode Software. Alamode is the software that I've been using for, wow, almost 25 years, folks. I'm getting there. 25 years. Uh, you should be as well. It's alamode.com or 800 Alamode. And we, of course, are sponsored by OREP Insurance. OREP is the insurance uh, that I use for my ENO. It's super easy and there's all kinds of benefits. And guess what? They saved me money over my prior E&O company. Go to OREP.org for more information. It's OREP.org. Okay, folks, I do employ uh, several VAs. One of them is an individual that is, uh, is full-time. Uh, she works uh, in my office, if you will. I, I use in air quotations. You can't see it, but I promise I'm, I'm using air quotations. Okay, I actually wasn't. But I, I will now. She works in my office. Okay, I really did it that time. In the Philippines, uh, found that uh, that working with individuals in the Philippines has been the best uh, situation that I have found. Now, I have uh, another individual that uh, was in Bangladesh. He now lives in England, but he still works with me. I've got another individual that, uh, honestly, I don't even know where he lives, uh, come to think of it. Um, but uh, I, I, I use him for one-off tasks, uh, not on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, it, it works out. Um, I've got another uh, VA that works in Bosnia. Uh, in fact, he uh, he helps me with these podcasts. Hi, Sam. Big shout out to Sam. Um, and uh, I, I love working with VAs. I love working with virtual assistants. But I'll tell you, one of my biggest pet peeves is when appraisers and others don't treat their VAs like people. Folks, just because you don't see them on a regular basis, just because you don't shake their hand, and and just because you're not in the same office. And by the way, it's not just overseas. I, I have VAs. I have a VA that works in my hometown. I call her a VA because I never see her. Last time I even uh, uh, saw her face-to-face -face was probably 18, 24 months ago. It's been a long time, but I, I deal with her on a daily basis. She helps us out on a daily basis. And so she's a VA. I've got another VA that lives in California, um, and she's a full-time employee as well. She's on every day, uh, Monday through Friday, and she's working with us all the time. Um, but I'll tell you where I run into this most often. Where I run into this attitude most often, and I guess the purpose of the podcast today is to hopefully uh, discourage this thing that sometimes happens, and that is Sometimes I, I feel that my fellow business owners, my fellow appraisers tend to treat VAs a little less than. They tend to treat their VAs as, as not persons just because they're on the other side of the world. They might live in a third world country. They might have a different situation than you and I have. Uh, but folks, uh, if you want to have a good experience, um, scratch their back, they'll scratch yours, really. Uh, now, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've worked with VAs in some countries, uh, not to name any. 
uh, that that my experience has just been bad over and over and over again. And I'm not saying that it just happens to be the country, but I do think there are different attitudes in different countries towards Americans. Uh, I've found a lot of success with the VAs that I currently work with. And specifically, I'll tell you, I've got a gal that has worked with me for a year now. Uh, she's coming up uh, as of this recording on her one year anniversary, and she has been a huge, huge, huge benefit to us. Uh, her name is Giselle. And uh, she is a person, folks. <laughs> She's a real live human being with feelings and with, uh, you know, she runs into issues and problems just like anybody else does. And we work with that. And, uh, you know, part of bringing individuals on that work in third world countries, sometimes you have to deal with some things that you don't normally have to deal with here in America. Let me give you an example. Every year or so, and sometimes twice a year, unfortunately, uh, the Philippines are hit with, with just huge typhoons. Um, these tropical storms will hit, and they will knock out power. They will knock out Internet for days. And that just happens. That's something you just have to accept. You just have to uh, sit back and, and say, you know what, that, that kind of stuff happens. You, in general, have to deal with a, lo a slower Internet connection, even when on the good days, even when things are, are, are going well. Um, there's just things you got to deal with. There's a huge lapse, if you will, in time zones. And that's another thing you've got to accept and just, you know, just uh, be okay with. Or you have to work with a situation where you're willing and able to, to either work with their time zone or possibly ask them to work with yours. Giselle was one. I was pretty insistent because of the high speed nature of our appraisal office waiting for 24 hours to get something done, or even 12 hours as the case may be, was just not an option. One of our business models is that we do things with high quality, but we do things with efficiency. And that means we get things done very quickly. And uh, I know a lot of appraisers are okay sending work to their VAs in the evening. And then the next morning, they pick up back where they uh, left off. And uh, and these uh, individuals will work during their daylight hours, which would be during our nighttime hours. That works just fine for a lot of appraisers. That did not work for me. I needed somebody who could work during our daylight hours. So Giselle works with us from nine until, well, actually from about 10 until six every day. Uh, and she uh, is working her midnight shift. I mean, it is it is dark when she's working and she sleeps during her day and uh, works during her night, which is our day, and it works really, really well. Um, and But it's something we have to keep in mind, and it's something that we are very grateful for, the fact that she is willing to do that. But again, this, this goes to the topic today. We need to step back and realize that there's some sacrifices being made on their end. And, uh, and by the way, when you think about pay, you think about uh, they may work for less per hour than we're used to, but uh, make sure you pay them well for what they're used to. Uh, for their uh, style of living. Uh, $5 an hour in the Philippines is huge. It's huge. It's, it's probably comparable to, uh, to $30 an hour here and uh, makes a big, big difference. Even $3 an hour is well above their, their minimum wage. And so keep those things in mind. We're certainly not um, slave labor uh, type, of, uh, type of things here. And, and, and that's kind of the purpose of today's episode. I, I, I don't see it often, but I see it often enough that it's a concern to me. I see it often enough that I have to step back and say, you know what, remember that, that virtual assistants, they may be virtual, but they're still people. And they're still individuals with feelings, and they have needs, and they have desires, and they have sadnesses, and they have emotions, and they have everything else. Because they're people, folks. They're human beings, and we need to make sure that we treat them like human beings. And I would even go so far as to say we need to set up a situation as a business owner that they are well compensated for what they do and that uh, you, on a regular basis, give them tips or bonuses, as the case may be. Uh, and I want to point out some of those things that I think are important. I want to point out some of those things that I think are absolutely essential when it comes to working with virtual assistants, especially uh, my, my best success has been in the Philippines. And so I'm going to focus in and hone in on that a little bit and just share with you a few helpful tips and tricks which will allow you to be a better business owner if you are going to employ the help of virtual assistants. But first, I want to pause here and remind you that we are sponsored by OREP Insurance. Right now, I'm in the process of renewing my uh, insurance and uh, 
It's easy, folks. It's easy. I just had to fill out a really simple three-minute application and then sit back and let the good people over at OREP do the work. They are brokers. They don't represent just one company. They represent several. So as a consequence, they can shop your profile to many different sources. Last year, I got my first quote back and I about fell on the floor. And I said, Lori, what the heck? And she goes, hold on. It's just the first quote. We've got others out there. And uh, and she was able to save me money again this last year. That's what a broker can do for you. And that's one of the things that OREP can do that other companies cannot. Go to OREP.org. That's O-R-E-P.org. And if you have not utilized them for your e and you need to right away. Speaking of utilizing companies that will benefit your life, how about Alamode? How about the ability to be able to do a side-by-side view of all of your comps at once. That's right. If you're doing an across the, you know, a lot of people will, will take a comparable and they'll make adjustments from top to bottom, right? And I've done this as well. But what about from side to side? What about starting, say, with the lot adjustment and just making an adjustment from left to right across the board. Uh, a la mode can allow you to do it any way you want. And they also have the smart adjuster, which you can put in numbers and allow it to adjust on its own. Uh, and then you just verify the information, which by the way, it's always right. A la mode is the ability to be able to do more with less. Check them out. Go to alamode.com or pick up the phone and call 800 a la mode. Speaking of saving time and being efficient, I tell you, I do it with uh, my virtual assistants, and I also do it with Data Master every day. The ability to save 30 to 60 minutes per report can be yours. All of that needless and mindless data entry, folks, can be done by Data Master with a punch of a button. It is a huge investment in efficiencies and quality. Check them out. Go to datamasterusa.com, or you can pick up the phone and call them. Uh, again, it's datamasterusa.com or 888 888- Three six two nine two two two. Again, it's eight 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 three six two nine two two two. All right, folks, we are back. We're talking today about virtual assistants, individuals who do not work in your office, and they can be in your same hometown, uh, they can be across town, or they can be across the world. Specifically, I'm talking about those individuals that you might employ across the world. And how are you treating them? I hope that you're treating them well. I'll be honest with you. I made the mistake in the beginning of of doing things incorrectly. I've made the mistake in the past of, uh, you know, thinking that they're on the other side of the world. And not that I treated them less than, uh, but I didn't set things up properly. And uh, as a consequence, I didn't uh, end up keeping those individuals. And I learned a lot along the way and hopefully learned from my mistakes and picked myself up by the bootstraps and did things uh, more correctly in times to come. And that uh, that's kind of where I'm going today. It'd give you a few helpful tips and a few helpful tricks, which will allow you to be able to do better work with the virtual assistants that you might hire. Let's go back to Giselle. Giselle works in the Philippines. Giselle is part of the team. Uh, Giselle is part of our appraisal family, if you will. In fact, um, one of the things that we love to do is to be able to celebrate birthdays around here. And uh, and so uh, when, when one of my employees has a birthday, for example, we typically buy them lunch. In fact, we usually buy the whole office lunch and we usually meet together in the break room. And uh, not only that, but uh, the individual that has a birthday usually gets to choose uh, the restaurant that we're going to go get food from. And then the other thing that they can think about is, uh, you know, what they want for dessert. A lot of times we'll do a cake and we'll blow out the candles and we'll do some fun things as an appraiser family. Obviously, we can't do that in the Philippines. And so what do we do? So um, Giselle's birthday's coming up and we step back and we said, you know what, let's, let's contemplate what we can do for Giselle because we can't do that whole dinner thing with her. Obviously, we're not going to jump on an airplane and head over to the Philippines and celebrate her birthday with her. But could we do something fun? Could we do something that will allow her to know that we love her, that she's part of the team? And one of the things we came up with was the idea of putting together a montage from everybody in the office, um, both those that work in the office and, again, those that are VAs. And we didn't get everybody, but we did get a few of the team here put together that basically put together a little birthday video uh, that we are going to be sending just Giselle here in a couple of days. I just wanted to share it with you just as an idea. Uh, Obviously, you won't be able to see it, but just imagine that uh, each one of these is as a member of the team videoing themselves, um, wishing Giselle a happy birthday. 
Hi, Giselle. Happy birthday. Dustin here. Uh, just wanted to do something a little bit fun this year and uh, just wish you a happy birthday. In conjunction with that, um, you're right at your year mark as well as uh, being a member of our team for the last year. Uh, congratulations. We're super, super excited to have you on board. You have been such a blessing to our office. Uh, I, I get constant feedback from the office and I don't tell you enough um, how grateful they are to have you there, how grateful I am to have you there. It has just been a huge benefit to have you on our team. I consider you a friend. I consider you a member of the appraisal family. Uh, you are just a, a hard worker. Uh, it cannot be easy <laughs> working through your your nighttime hours and then uh, and then maybe getting a few weeks during the, the day and uh, you're just a dedicated individual and we're just so happy to have you on board. Happy birthday. Uh, hope uh, hope uh, your day goes great and uh, and again we love you and um, have a great day. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Giselle. Happy birthday to you. We love you so much. Thank you for all you do. You make our lives amazing. Yes, thank you. I would be lost without you, Giselle. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye. Hi, Giselle. I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I hope that you have a phenomenal day. You take some time for yourself. Um, I just wanted to also thank you so much for everything that you've done for us and the company and being a part of our team. We seriously couldn't do it without you. You are amazing. So I just wanted to say happy birthday and I hope you, like I said, have a great day. Enjoy yourself. Happy birthday, Giselle. I just want to let you know I appreciate everything you do for me, and I hope you have a wonderful, terrific, happy birthday. Hi, Giselle. This is Erin. I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Hope you have a good day. Bye. Hi, Giselle. It's Lee. I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday and tell you how much I always enjoy your sweet demeanor and your sweet voice whenever we have our meetings. I always think that you sound like a little Disney princess. I hope you have a good day, and I just wanted to let you know how much I enjoy um, being a part of a team with you, and talk to you later. Bye. So that's it, folks. A little birthday celebration for uh, my virtual assistant, Giselle, who is on the other side of the world. She lives in uh, the Philippines. And uh, we want her to know that she is a part of our team. We want her to know that uh, that she is a huge part of our team. And uh, she is a part of our appraisal family. And again, it's kind of cheesy. Sure, I know. I, I took a risk throwing it out there. But uh, I just wanted to give you an example of uh, some of the things that we're trying to do to include her. Uh, a couple other things that I would throw out there, some things that we do to include her and other virtual assistants is, uh, you know, we do a lot of stuff over the um, the Internet as far as videos go. Uh, you couldn't see the video, obviously. You just got audio. But again, everybody's face was on there. They all recorded it either using their iPhones or Androids or a, a little program we use called Zoom. Zoom is a... Uh, it's a meeting software that allows us to meet face to face. And, and a lot of times we have Giselle on the office camera. We, we dedicate sometimes a computer to her being on there and uh, she's just part of the team. She's working away and we see her, she sees us and uh, it's like she's in the office with us kind of, um, kind of, but kind of not. Um, but it's, it's, we try to include her as much as we possibly can. Uh, so when we have a staff meeting, we dial her up, we let her know it's coming and we carry the laptop into the boardroom and we put uh, her on the screen. We put Aaron, uh, who works out of California, on the screen. And uh, the rest of everybody else works here locally. And so they're all able to come in and, um, and we're able to have a meeting together where some are outside the meeting room and some are inside the meeting room. But we try to include everybody together. The other thing that uh, we do is on a, on a regular basis, I, I shoot a little bonus over to Giselle. You know, maybe we have a particularly busy week or what have you. And uh, so when I, I get to payday, I might drop another 25 or $50 in her account. And I'll tell you, that goes a long way in the Philippines. But, you know, it's a little gesture on my side, but it's a huge gesture on her side. And she is loyal, folks. She is very dedicated to us. She works 40 hours a week. 
sometimes more, um, but she works 40 hours a week and she just does a phenomenal job. She really is excellent at what she does. She's very, very smart. Uh, a couple uh, other things, uh, you know, I try to make sure that her office is set up well. Um, obviously, I'm not in control. She is a contractor. I'm not in control of what she has there. But, you know, for example, about six months into it, I, I realized, and, and it was silly of me not to ask earlier, but realized she only had one monitor, that she was just working off of one monitor. Well, folks, she does a lot of data entry. And I know in our offices, it's sure nice to have dual or triple or quadruple monitors. And uh, so it's kind of a bummer that she was working for so long without that. And so what did I do? I bought her a monitor and I shipped it over to her and uh, she was very grateful for that. And now she's got a set up. And you know what? If she ever leaves us, I'm not going to ask for that back. It's just a gift. It's something that, uh, you know, as part of the team, we're going to set you up and we're going to we're going to you know, make sure that you have all the tools that you need to perform the work that you perform. Uh, if you're going to work with individuals from the Philippines, one thing I would throw out there is this idea called the 13th month. Uh, if you've not heard of the 13th month, uh, look it up, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you uh, the gist of it here. There is a tradition in the Philippines, in the workforce, if you will, that uh, if you work a full year, uh, January through December, that in December they call that the 13th month and you actually get double pay that month. Uh, it's just kind of a tradition thing that they do. It's not something we do here in the States, so it's easy to forget. But I've got a little reminder on my calendar. I think it's December 1st. It just pops up and it says, reminder, uh, 13th month uh, this month. And that reminds me that I need to double pay that month. And I do it with pleasure. I do it, uh, you know, you're not supposed to do it um, unless they work a full year. Or maybe you can do like a half uh, 13th month if they only work six months or three quarters if they're there nine months or a quarter if they're there three months. But uh, Giselle had been with us about nine months uh, when she hit her 13th month in December. And uh, you know what? We paid her um, the whole the whole 13th month. Uh, you know, she's just part of the team. She's part of the family. She's part of the group. And uh, I, think, I think this episode comes down to this, folks. Uh, treat your employees as you want to be treated whether they be in office or whether they be halfway across the world. That's what it's all about. It's the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do to you. I think as you do that, you will find great success with working with virtual assistants. One of the things that we are going to be talking about in the Appraiser Academy coming up in a couple of weeks is virtual assistants. We're going to talk about how to find them, how to hire them, how to train them, how to manage them, how to produce a template, if you will, a video template of a procedural manual that you can then shift to another VA if for whatever reason the VA that you are training is not going to be, stay around. Folks, that's part of the boot camp inside the Appraiser Academy. If you've not joined us, now's a great time to join, especially if you're interested in working with VAs. Uh, go to theappraisercoach.com and then just drop down to memberships and check out the Appraiser Academy. Join us and find out how to hire, how to manage, and how to work with virtual assistants virtually, no pun intended, around the world. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.